At the Joy School for Children with Autism in Ethiopia, the parachute game is one of the more popular activities. Students take it in turns to hold the edges of a huge rainbow-colored piece of silk, shaking it up and down and singing while others sit underneath. The game is a way to encourage autistic children who often find it hard to socialize with other people to play together in a fun and safe environment. The center is like many other schools around the world, dedicated to supporting children with a condition and their parents, but it's one of a kind in Ethiopia where autism is little recognized and underdiagnosed. It was set up by Zemi Yunus, whose 20-year-old son Jojo has autism. Like many parents of autistic children, Zemi knew her son was different but struggled for years to get a diagnosis. But most psychologists and teachers told her he was badly brought up or spoiled. My son was uh, expelled from schools from five, six different schools because um, and, uh, he showed different behavior. And uh, people believed that um, he was a spoiled child. He didn't want to learn. He was a lazy boy. With no teacher willing to take Jojo, she was forced to leave him at home and take her younger boy to school alone. My son Jojo was watching us through the window when we depart to, you know, when I was taking uh, uh, my other son to his school and it was so painful. Zemi only realized Jojo could be autistic when her husband saw a program about it in America. After some investigation, she found scores of children living in Ethiopia who displayed very similar characteristics to Jojo. Many of them kept hidden away from the world by their parents who were too confused or ashamed to have them seen in public. Using money saved from her job as a beautician, Zemi set up the Joy Autism School in Addis Ababa in 2002. Today, it has more than 75 students and employs 30 members of full-time staff. I feel very lucky to work with these children. These children need love and care. I'm always happy to give them affection. They need love and care more than anything. I will always work with them. Betty is one of the younger children who recently joined the school. In the specially adapted learning center, she plays with sand and water as a way to learn more about texture. Before her mother found the joy school, she struggled to take care of Betty and often resorted to tying her hands behind her back. I used to work as a maid at many homes to bring her up, but since I had no one who can take care of her in my absence, I used to tie her hands and leave her with neighbors and, and go look for work like baking injera, rice flour pancake and making traditional drinks and washing clothes for people. Disability is still a major stigma in Ethiopia, especially in rural areas where there is little or no medical support for complex illnesses or conditions. More often than not, Zemi says children with autism are never diagnosed, leaving them to grow up as ostracized adults or inpatients of psychiatric wards. My life was hell. It wasn't life at all. It was a very difficult situation until God brought Zemi to me. My son is so much better now. I'm very happy and my house is full of peace. Change has come to our life since we met Zemi. My life would have been different now if I hadn't met her. There is anecdotal evidence that a number of autism cases are on the rise in Ethiopia, according to a small group of doctors researching the issue.